Um, we're going to move on to the state of the project and the dev update. Uh, Debbie will be taking over as a moderator. Um, if you are in the Zoom call, you could just stay on. Otherwise, if you're in sessions, you could also go to the state of the project slash dev update. All right. Thank you, Debbie. All right. My pleasure. Um, and I will be posting in the chat um, the uh, captioning, and I will be monitoring chat um, both on Feedloop and here. Um, I'm Debbie Lukenville, by the way. <laughs> uh, and my video is off. Um, and so with all of that said, I want to thank our sponsors, Equinox, who is our platform sponsor. Uh, ECDI, the Evergreen Community Development Initiative, which is our captioning sponsor, and Kipu, which is our Hackfest sponsor for tomorrow. Um, so we have the state of the De Evergreen project and the developers update, and we will be hearing from Andrea. Uh, are you here, Andrea? All right, Andrea, do you want to do developers first? That's fine. I'm ready. Let's do it. Cool. Sorry, my, my shocked face. Uh, was more of a surprise face. Um, let me grab my slides. I was actually typing a comment to Jane, but I'll just say it. I, I am I'm also sending an email to Jane. I'm definitely down for a rethink of our community development process, Jane. Thank you for uh, giving us something to think about there. So with that said, um, let me go ahead and whoever is sharing this screen, will you stop sharing this screen so I can share my screen? Thank you. Sorry. No worries. Share. is after 3 p.m. on the last day of the conference and you know we're all in full punchy mode all right greetings everybody um welcome to the 2024 development update um i am andrea bunt Snyman. i am not a developer um i do work with developers every day though i'm also not a core committer although i am a docs committer and i am not entirely certain why past andrea volunteered to give this presentation although i know i did volunteer to do it i do not know what possessed me to do so. Anyway, but here we are. I'm going to talk about um, all the stuff that has happened since the last conference. And yes, I did shamelessly rip off this slide format from Galen Charlton because it's like a really nice slide format. So thank you, Galen. Ahem. So here is a table of releases since the previous conference. Um, we had the final uh, releases for 3.8, 3.9, and 3.10 series. We had two major releases in 3.11.0 and 3.12.0. And pursuant to the lightning talk that we just heard from Jane, you can see in 3.11 and 3.12, we've actually done a really good job stepping up the tempo of patch releases. Those are those little intermediaries like 3.11.1, 3.11.2. And no small part of that is actually thanks to Jane shaking the tree in IRC, um, you know, monthly. So, uh, but we collectively as a community have done a much better job about that. Uh, which is something to be proud of. Um, these statistics as of this past Monday when I ran them, um, between the 2023 and 2024 conferences, there are 714 commits, 33 patch authors, 54 people who have tested and reviewed and signed off, and 18 evergreen releases counting betas. So compare that to the period before between the 2022 and 2023 conferences. Um, the numbers are slightly down on commits, but I'm skeptical of commits as a as a straight measure of, of value. However, uh, releases, there were three times as many releases between 2023 and 2024 conferences than there were the prior period. So that is super. Bug squashing leaks. Um, I have heard these get a lot of uh, justifiable praise this uh, conference it, for Taryn McKenna and uh, her running of these. And uh, this is just a table that shows kind of what the various accomplishments have been in terms of numbers for the last uh, year's worth of these. So uh, Feedback Fest and Bug Squash Week, there is a technical difference between them, but they end up practically doing a lot of similar kinds of work. So I just smushed them all together in a big table. But you can also see that there's been um, a good amount of consistency across these in terms of what is getting done. Um, and who, how many people are participating. So that's always good to see. And deduplicated list that yes is, I'm sorry, it is alphabetical by first name because I did not feel like doing the extra work in, in, in Excel to make it do it the other way. So just, you know, string me up or whatever. 
76 individuals participated in each of uh, collectively in those four events. Um, you could also perhaps use this list to gain a mode of um, modal, modal measurement of the most common names in uh, in the Evergreen community. Um, spoiler alert: It is uh, Jason is the most common name on this list. All right. Um, I'm not sure why this graphic looks so fuzzy. I am sorry for that. But between the conference last year and the conference this year, um, we have several new code and documentation authors. And this is the number of commits that they have uh, each contributed. Obviously, Stephen Mayo of Pines hit the ground running, um, has been a, st a steadfast presence in um, new devs, in code review. Um, and, you know, Stephen, you're doing great work. Um, some of these people on this list were uh, documentation commits. My colleague, Lena Hernandez, um, I think Robin, Britta, and Simone were all documentation commits. And then Spencer Pennington, um, who I don't think is at this conference, is a, a master's degree student who started coming to dig meetings and was like, I need a project because I'm doing technical writing for my master's degree. And we're like, here, take uh, Evergreen Indiana's reports, uh, or no, staff catalog documentation and genericize it for Evergreen. And he did this and it's great. So that was a that was a cool contribution last year as well. We also have four, count them, four new core committers. Blake Graham Henderson of Mobius, Stephanie Leary of Equinox, Taryn McKenna of Pines, and Josh Stompro at Lake Agassiz Regional Library. And a special shout out to Taryn McKenna, who has been wielding her merging hammer often and with great success. Uh, so thank you, Taryn. Uh, release teams. So these were our release teams for 3.12 and then the upcoming 3.13. One of the things I'd like you to note on this list is the number of new names in terms of release team members, in terms of new committers, in terms of new developers um, that are on this list. And obviously some of the people on this list have been around quite some time. Um, but maybe they're in new roles. And that was a very, I thought a very cool thing to see and sort of harkens back to Galen's call to action at last year's um, development update at the conference, you know, talking about the need for help to, to share these roles. And for those of you that are um, maybe a senior uh, committer, you've been around a while, you're burned out on release teams. I get that. Um, the team modality for releases is, been a little bit different than the old solo um, one person has to do all of the things releases. So I'd consider some of you senior developers, including some of you who I work with, to maybe reconsider um, your role in the release team. And if you could potentially join a future release team to serve as, you know, a mentor or senior technical expert, because there is a whole ton of people who want to help learn how to do this. And, um, you know, it would be a great way to, to, to continue to broaden the scope of people who are able to do this. One other thing I want to say about 3.12 is that Jane took it upon herself to really update a lot of the documentation involved in the actual building of the release from a technical standpoint. Some of that documentation, man, it was so outdated. And so as part of the 3.12 build process, which Gail and Charlton uh, helpfully guided us on, we would stop every time we came up with something that was that was wrong and, and Jane would put it in the documentation. So again, if you've wanted to get involved in this process um, and haven't had a chance yet, there's a lot of new resources there. Um, is there anything I am seeing the chat go by, but I'm not really looking at it. Was there, is there anything that I need to answer? Nope, just lots of comments. Cool, 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 and Lots cool, of cool. praise. And yes, yep. great, love to see it. So, Evergreen 312. But Andrea showed this morning or earlier today, you might recognize this as a slightly uh, cleaned up and less wacky version of that. Um, so, you know, I just uh, to, to continue with that, um, here's a list of feature highlights um, with links to all of them. And uh, our slides from the Ruth and Andrea show will be posted that has all of this in great detail. Um, along with the video with all of our comic hijinks. Um, so, but 312, you know, a bunch, I think we all talked about all of these things, I believe, in our presentation. That was like three whole hours ago. I don't know what happened then. Anyway, and of course, we have 313 on the horizon. 
Uh, on the left are things that have already been merged, which is to say they are already part of the code base for the upcoming 3.13 release. There's some great accessibility things in there. There's a carousels improvement. Um, there's a quality of life improvement about record note counts, but there is a ton of stuff that is ready for review. Some of that is pull request. All of this is pull requested as far as I know, all these seven things that I listed. Um, some of them are signed off. Um, and there is a link there to the 313 roadmap. Uh, if anyone actually has that link, can I copy this right from my, hey, look, I can look at technology, you guys. All right. If you do nothing else today, if you are a committer or a tester, go go look at that list. Uh, a bunch of stuff is up on uh, test servers. There is some stuff is on uh, Mobius bug squash server. There's some things on Equinox bug squash servers. Um, look at these things. Give your feedback. If you're a core committer, um, consider committing. Uh, the feature freeze is coming up in a week and a half. I don't have the calendar in front of me. And there's some very, very cool things on this 313 list um, that that deserve a chance to be made, make it into a community release. So in case you missed it in the Ruth and Andrea show, yes, we finally have a chance to kill Dojo. Uh, you know, all respect to our beloved for uh, f father for uh, framework. Sorry. <laughs> um, these are the last six Dojo interfaces and they are covered respectively by two bugs. Uh, one, five of them are covered by that Angular acquisitions bug and then one by the uh, CERC policies port. Uh, please look at those. It would be so great to make 3.13 a release that covers the last Dojo interfaces. I also have a spreadsheet here um, that I put together earlier this week of all of the remaining non-Angular interfaces. Um, and I, I welcome any comments or corrections to that spreadsheet, uh, but that should be a public link. Um, there's not that many. It looks like a long list, but more than half of them are actively either in progress um, or have plans to be worked on. So like, this is really, really close you guys. This is um, a chance to, I'm somebody knock on wood for me. It's a chance to have all the evergreen interfaces in one framework for the first time since I don't even know when. Wouldn't that be cool? And of course, this is just in time for Angular to be deprecated. So we're not gonna have that conversation today though. So um, another thing uh, out there is reports. Reports is not tactically in Angular. It's in some strange bespoke um, old something that I can't remember what it is in, mostly XML and HTML. But anyway, also a chance to get that out of the way as well. Um, all right, hack away. We finally got to have hack away in person again for uh, the first time since COVID. And it was great because my uh, personal opinion and I'm sorry if you don't share this opinion, but I'm the one doing the developer updates, so you're going to hear my opinion on some things, um, is that Hackaway suffers more than the conference from being remote. Like, I love the Evergreen Conference in person. I get to see some of my favorite people. We get to do ridiculous things like, you know, sing karaoke. Um, we get into all kinds of adventures, some of which cannot be related in a safe setting. Um, but Hackaway, uh, but the conference rather, does actually pretty well, I think, as an online event. Um, the Hackaway, not so much. So it was really great to have a bunch of, you know, Evergreen's best and brightest in a room together, in a physical room together, talking about some of the bigger issues facing the project. So there are also several people that were able to join us online, um, also among the best and brightest who contributed to these conversations. Um, so there are two of the bigger discussions we had were how the Evergreen Project Board can better support um, release teams and the developer committee, that should probably say community, not committee. But anyway, um, as well as uh, a potential potential pathways for integrating Redis and OpenSurf, or, you know, eventually replacing one with the other uh, for, for future evergreens, and a potentially an evergreen 4.0. Um, there are some great statistics that we gathered from that. Um, there were also musical swings, uh, which if none of you have been to the Fort uh, Bend State Park outside of Indiana and Indianapolis, there are legit Musical swings there. Um, Angela Kills Dog, my former Equinox colleague, was the one who tipped us off to these. And we, a bunch of us, just went and swung on the swings, and it was delightful. And I have linked there a video that Rogan took. So thank you. Next hack away. Oop, ah, ah. see, this is why I can't drive. Next hack away. 
hosted, it's going to be hosted by Noble and CW Mars sometime this fall, uh, likely in the realm of Boston, Massachusetts, but uh, more details are going to come post-conference, so please stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed to the listserv, subscribe to the general listserv, because that is where that information will be announced. Um, in Equinox's ever-expanding uh, quest to fulfill the cat picture quota on our slides, here is Rogan's kitten um, that he, he just decided to add to the slide, and is she not the cutest, right? All right. So now it's time for a little bit of a retrospective. I've alluded to some of this in the previous slides. Here's where I think we've improved. Um, release tempo. And this is, again, compared to the period prior. So what I am looking at is the time between now and the 2023 conference and comparing that to the time between the 2023 conference and the 2022 conference. So release tempo. I mentioned this. We put out 18 releases, including betas, um, versus six. Uh, greater community engagement. We had um, 20 additional participants in the feedback fests and bug squashing weeks in the past year than in the year prior. We got four new committers from the last conference to now as opposed to one. We've had better engagement from new developers and new committers. Uh, Jane has been hosting weekly code review meetings. Taryn has been hosting monthly new developer meetings. Both of these were grassroots efforts on the part of newer developers to uh, build their own structures for education and knowledge sharing. Um, and if you, by the way, if you're like shaky at Git like I am, but have to use it anyway, there's a whole bunch of, of, of documentation that the new uh, devs have put together on their wiki um, that that helps, you know, uh, that can give you like some guidance on, on some of the more common Git things as they're used in Evergreen. Another thing um, that I was really happy to see happen this past year was the board uh, starting on the strategic planning process. A lot of people here were involved in um, the focus groups and the retreats, responded to the community surveys. There is a draft strategic plan underway, and I'm really excited for the board to share that with the rest of the community um, to really take a, a critical look at what the next stage of growth is for this project. So these are all things that I think we did a really good job with in the last year. So here's where I think we need more improvement. And again, you're kind of getting my opinions on here. I did send these slides to the uh, core committers and the two release teams mentioned. If anybody had any edits or corrections or whatever, I didn't get any, but that is to say, that's not to say that this is their blathering. This is, this is some of my thoughts um, on where I think we need more improvement. Senior committer participation and patch review. This is something that Jane alluded to in her uh, prior uh, lightning talk just a few minutes ago. Senior committers, some of whom have literally been with this community since its origination, like they're burned out. A lot of them are doing big projects. A lot of them are doing uh, things for their employers outside of specific evergreen review. I get that. I work with a lot of these people. I'm sometimes the one saying, I'm sorry, you can't spend community time on that because we have a contract deadline. However, this is my plea um, for senior committers to find ways to get back involved, at the very least in a mentorship or knowledge transfer way. Those code review sessions that are held weekly, the new devs meeting, uh, see if there's a, you know, reach out to Jane or reach out to Taryn and see if there's a way for you to share some of the knowledge um, that you've accumulated over your collective decades, if not centuries of experience. <laughs> and, you know, see if you can maybe find ways to transmit that knowledge. So this is my plea um, for senior committers to, not to take up all of the burdens, because there were has, were many, many years where there was the same five people. We all knew who they are doing all the work. I'm not saying go back to that model. I'm saying think of how you can tap into this new uh, growth of people who are excited to learn, who want to help, who just need some knowledge. Think about how you can facilitate that within the structures these people have built. Second bullet point is basically the saying the same thing mentorship of new devs, new community members, although this doesn't have to be in a development standpoint. This can be for anything. New people, there are so many committees and interest groups out there. Find one that picks, piques your interest. Show up. We're a friendly group. Uh, most of these are groups are meeting tomorrow. If somebody has a link to the, the times for all those, please drop it in the chat. But most of these groups are meeting tomorrow. Um, I know that a couple that I'm on, Outreach and Dig, man, we are always looking for help. Don't don't be shy. Don't be afraid to come join us. You know, we don't we love new people. 
There is no such thing as a stupid question. You're not annoying. We love you. We want your help. Come join. Um, so again, I feel like, um, you know, Jane and I definitely have a mind meld here about this. <laughs> Streamlining the release process. She was talking about, you know, kind of more of a rapid release um, modality, which I think is an interesting thing to consider. I was sort of more thinking of um, building on some tools that we have built in the past year, like those linting rules, um, like the release notes builder, uh, Galen wrote a little script that builds the release notes automatically, uh, which may th makes things happen faster or for point releases. Um, there's a docs building script similarly that now works on Windows for filthy Windows users like me. Um, you can build the docs. So things like that, that um, make it easier for the less technical people to get involved, that make it more streamlined to actually build a release as opposed to a series of many, many discrete steps. This is another way where I think some of our senior um, committers and developers could could bring some of their experience here to see what we can do to streamline this process and make it easier and faster. Um, start nominating release teams earlier. Blake reminded me last week, this week, that was last week, that uh, we, we seem to recollect that there was a time when fall's release team was established at the conference, i.e. now, uh, and the spring release team was established at the Hackaway. Can we get back to that? because we're now running several months behind that in terms of getting release teams started, which means we're running several months behind where we would ideally be doing a release. Um, I would love to actually bring this topic up at the Hackfest tomorrow and see if if there are people willing to, to bite that bullet and um, step up to be part of the fall release team now. Um, another good thing about this is that it can smooth that transition. So you're not taking three months off and then coming back in and being like, oh gosh, where are we? You know you can have that handoff from one release team to another. Um, I'd love to see us leverage the upcoming strategic plan to produce actual measurable results, particularly with development. Jane mentioned this too, but consider paying for certain tasks that are mission critical to evergreen the community that tend to fall on the shoulder of you know, people who, while they may be paid to do evergreen work, they're not paid to you know do this stuff specifically. Um, if patch review is critical, can the project pay people for that? If released, being on the release team is critical, can the project pay for that? So these are all questions that I'd like to see us consider where we could po possibly move forward as a, uh, as a community. And then that is all from me. I'm sorry if I left anybody out, anything out. Again, contributing to the cat pictures. These are my cats, the Nyman household cats. We have George, uh, who is the spoiled lazy house cat number one. Um, who has usually in his spot right here on my desk, Tara, spoiled lazy house cat number two, who is currently actually in that very same spot that she is pictured in by my office window. And then because I live in the country, we have a feral cat that lives in our shed. We got him fixed and we named him Brutus. And so maybe someday he will be my third house cat. So thank you. Um, if I will check the chat, if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer them. And I'm going to go ahead and go straight into the state of the project. Um, I do not have slides. So, it, Andrea, if you want to leave up pictures of cats, that's perfectly Can do. legit. Okay, awesome. And thanks to George, Tara, and uh, Rudis for um, giving us something to look at while, while I talk. Uh, I am Ruth Frazier Davis, and I'm currently the coordinator for Evergreen Indiana, as well as the Evergreen Community Development Initiative. Um, but in this role, I'm president of the Evergreen Project Board, and I just want to share a few things. Andrea actually alluded to a few of them, and I'll go a little bit further into some of them. This is going to be a pretty short presentation full of thank yous and then some information as well. I want to start by saying thank you to Gina Monty of Bibliomation and the conference committee. It cannot be overstated how much work Gina has put into um, making this conference a reality. Uh, it, it was a small conference committee this uh, year and um, she did the lion's share of the, the work on the ground to do that. So if you have the opportunity to, to send her a thank you or some type of accolade or something. She just is amazing. Also, 
uh, thank you to the others on the conference committee as well. Uh, and it, it's been great. It's been really good. Um, also, I wanna thank our conference sponsors, presenters, attendees, and exhibitors for making this a success. Uh, Andrea was talking about um, in-person versus online. And uh, I, I gotta say like this online conference is pretty daggone good. A and we've done it a few times and I just feel real good about this one specifically. So thank you. The Evergreen Project Board has been uh, busy over the past year. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Again, it was alluded to already that we have been undergoing a strategic planning process, uh, working with um, the, the subcommittee. And I do want to thank the strategic plan subcommittee that includes Jeanette Lunger of CW Mars, Kathy Lucier of Noble, and Katie Greenleaf Martin of Pales uh, for working with me on that subcommittee. Uh, we contracted with Carson Block Consulting and there have been multiple um, stakeholder meetings, whether they be focus groups. We did have one at the 2023 Hackaway in Indianapolis, and then we had a stakeholder retreat and, and some other things as well. And we are, as has also been mentioned, in the draft stage for the strategic plan. We are not quite ready to release something to all you all, but that will be in the relatively near future. Um, some of the things that came out of that uh, planning process, however, were uh, themes, of course, surrounding collaboration, which that is that really is how this community works, how to make uh, the Evergreen community, the Evergreen software, um, and the Evergreen project itself sustainable. Uh, and have this idea of forward and transformative thinking um, as we uh, plan and do. And then to make sure to keep um, the, for me, this is what I consider a core value, the idea of openness in many different um, venues or modes, the idea of openness, whether it be open source, open access, open communication, all of those things to keep that at the forefront because that is kind of the thing that keeps the circulation going through this organism. So we're excited to be able to um, bring some of that to you soon. We also in kind of tandem with that or tangential to that, there has been a membership model working group that has also been meeting with uh, people representing a broad um, cross-section of the evergreen community. So, and looking at ways, again, to go back toward um, making the project as a 501c3 um, sustainable so that it can continue to support the community in um, more and better ways. Okay, so some committee things have gone on and this is the point in the program where some of you have been waiting with bated breath for the strategic plan. Uh, not the strategic plan, I'm sorry, the annual report, Never mind. strike the strategic plan. The annual report, but before I link it in the chat, I'm going to thank uh, Rogan Hamby for doing amazing, amazing work on wrangling the information. Many people have worked on it, but it, it has definitely been Rogan who has brought it all together into the thing. So I'm going to go ahead and link that into the Zoom chat. And then whoever wants to propagate that to other places, go for it. Some other, uh, and I'm not gonna go through that. I want you all to have the opportunity to open it and digest it a little bit, um, but you can look at the cover here uh, and then make sure to uh, go and look through 
that there are some exciting things in there, I think, but too many exciting things to put into this small time slot. Other things that have been happening with the, uh, the outreach committee, have, have one of the big things has been an overhaul, which you we're not ready to share yet, but real close to the Evergreen ILS website. Uh, and a huge thank you to Stephanie Leary for really spearheading that, taking the reins. And of course, as always, there's always herding of cats when it comes to anything we do here, we being the cats in this case, not actual cats. And Stephanie has been the one who has um, herded us against all odds. So there will be um, a release for the website coming up in the coming months. The other thing has been, uh, we, there's been some turnover, of course, on the outreach committee. Also, if you're interested in joining, show up. It's, uh, Rogan's gonna put into chat in a second, which Wednesday of the month it is. It's just on my calendar, so I take it for granted. Um, thank you, the first Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. Eastern, and there is a link uh, on our wiki page. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Catherine, and I'm going to forget what library she's from, and I apologize for that, uh, has been really leading uh, the charge on gathering together a social media plan. And uh, and I will say thank you to her specifically on that because it helped with the conference and our ability to promote our sponsors. So uh, I'm excited about that. The next thing that has been ongoing is we just had an annual election and I am really just proud of the community, honestly, for um, first of all, people nominating people to uh, run for election to the Evergreen Project Board, people agreeing to actually accept the nominations, uh, and then people registering to vote and then showing up to vote. Those are all crucial parts of this process. Uh, I want to say, first of all, thank you to Katie Greenleaf Martin of Pales for serving on the Evergreen Project Board. And then also congratulations for being reelected to it in this past election. Then welcome to Susan Morrison of Georgia Pines and Lindsay Stratton of the Westchester Library System. And welcome back to Andrea Bunce-Nyman of the Equinox Open Library Initiative. And then so much thanks to outgoing uh, board members being Chris Sharp of Georgia Pines, Rogan Hamby of Equinox Open Library Initiative and Joe Knuven of uh, Wilmington Public Library, which is part of the consortium of Ohio libraries. Thanks. I like I could just like sit here and just like look at read your names, look at your faces and just say thank you for all the work that you have done um, recently over the years and just a, a, a very warm hearted welcome to those of you who are coming on to the board. Andrew, you talked all about the releases. So I'm just gonna say, hey, yo, we released 311 and 312 in uh, 2023. The major themes from my perspective were accessibility, which I am, am so proud of the work that has been done uh, on the Evergreen ILS in terms of accessibility. Angularization, um, I could talk forever about angularization, but I'm not going to. Lots of work. And also, if you don't know what angular is yet, pull somebody aside because we're just going to keep saying it and you're just going to be confused. But it has to do with a web framework. That's it. Uh, connection and security. And, and these, this being connection to third party um, products, services, all sorts of things. Um, also connection with one another and, and how we function again as a community, also major themes, but 
Uh, and I think about the 312 release team, that idea of connection um, to get together that group of noobs, saying noobs, yeah, in there and, and being able to work together in that. But then also, of course, uh, in this modern era of librarianship where we see so many really, really useful tools out there and being able to connect the Evergreen ILS to them, but then also do it in a responsible manner that protects data. Uh, so there, and then infrastructure. I love some infrastructure. And when we're talking about OpenSurf and Redis, and we're talking about database optimizations and all of that stuff, if you need somebody to come and like cheer you on, let it be me, because I will always, always say, maybe we can't see it, but well, we don't have to dig a trench and fix it. That's amazing. So go infrastructure. Yes, I am an infrastructure fangirl. And then the idea of culture building. And thank you to Andrea and thank you to Jane and thank you. There, This could go on and on and on because I have seen a shift in the culture of the development community. And I have, because of that, I have seen a shift in the mode of the Evergreen Project Board that has to do, it is much more welcoming and strives to be inclusive and uh, with a, a mind toward mentorship. And I am so, proud to be involved in that. So continued thank you all across the board here. You are amazing. Just wanna say a, a little bit about finances. Uh, since we have become a 501c3, I am not pulling up the actual uh, financial charts. Galen does a great job providing them to us. And I felt like I would talk about them too much because I talk about everything too much. So. I will say the Evergreen Project as an organization is solidly in the black at this point at about $150,000 in assets. That's always flexy as assets are always flexy in an organization. Um, we could talk about that again, also ad nauseum. What does that mean? That number is just a number, doesn't have a whole lot of meaning without a lot of context. But that's all I'm providing you with is just a number and it's a good one for the time being. If you have questions about that, I would encourage you to join us because guests are always welcome. Thank you, Galen. Guests are always welcome at the Evergreen Project board meetings. It is not a closed environment and we encourage you to show up and ask questions. So please, please do. I'm going to end what I have to say here talking about the 2025 conference. And I'm gonna take my glasses off because my eyes are hurting me a little bit, but also to make a point that this is serious, I'm taking my glasses off. I'm gonna put them back on again because I can't actually see you very well. But nonetheless, yeah, okay, making the point. We all love in-person conferences and they are great. I will say that they, they do not make money for the project. They don't, I mean, maybe $5,000 here or there, but they are great for doing collaborative work, for building our network of practitioners, all of that. Um, but we rely on people saying that they want to actually be a site for those conferences. And the call did go out uh, in the fall of 2023 and uh, there there was nothing no 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 bites for that so i do have another link i'm going to put it over into chat and this is a wall of text i am not going to sugarcoat that but it is a very important wall of text that has information about what it takes to serve as a site. Um, again, this is a little bit flexy, but the schedule is getting a little bit tight. If you are interested in um, helping to 
host a 2025 Evergreen International Conference, take a gander at that page. And then Debbie has a comment over there in chat that says, um, yes, to have a meeting with, with all of us about um, what we're going to do about that conference. It's good to have competitive proposals, just FYI. So you don't have to talk amongst yourself and figure out where it's going to be, just, just submit one. I would encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Please also know that um, there is a standing committee that will support any local committee as much as possible to help make this happen. So don't feel like you are alone, even if you want to do it, but you don't feel like you have all of the competencies. Um, there is nobody that would have any problem. Well, I, I, this, I'm not gonna say that's very hyperbolic. We would love a West Coast conference to happen. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, if there are any questions for myself or any other members of the Evergreen Project Board, feel free to you can email president at evergreen-ils.org um, or there might be some other one, but that I'll share it. If you send it to me, I'll just share it with the rest of the people on the board. Um, and that will change because I won't be the president forever. So that's, that also moves around. Thank you again to everyone who has participated in the conference, who has participated in the community, who has participated in uh, releases and testing and all of those things, we are going to keep on doing good and better work. And I look forward to uh, seeing you all maybe in person in 2025.